So now I'm going to go back a little bit to define uh, what is a semi-algebra of sets on a set. So the reason for this is that um, often the way we want to define measures is by first defining them on a full uh, algebra of sets or sigma algebra of sets, first defining them on a semi-algebra of sets, and then extending. So we want to first define them on a smaller thing, and so we're defining what that smaller thing is. Um, now the way, so I'm about to go through the definition, uh, but just before I get into that, the way I like to think about what a semi-algebra of sets is, um, now that I've gone through this, uh, is that it's like an algebra of sets, but it's just not closed under unions yet. And it will be if you just close it under unions. So it, it's just waiting. A semi-algebra of sets is a collection of sets that's just waiting for you to throw in all the unions of things that are in it so that you can now make it into an algebra of sets. All right, and here's the definition. So it, the definition is not just going to be you know, the same as the definition of an algebra of sets, but leaving out the unions part of things. Um, yeah, you will see. So let's just go through it. So if you have, I'm going to use fancy S rather than fancy A just to uh, highlight that this is not and not going to be closed under unions typically uh, when we work with it. So take a collection of sets, subsets of X. Um, we call it a semi-algebra of sets on X if it contains the empty set and the full thing. Um, and it's closed under intersections. And then now for the third point, it's about complements. And if I just went and said closed under complements, then I'd be defining an algebra of sets all over again, right? Um, if it's closed under complements and is closed under intersection, then by De Morgan's law, it's automatically closed under unions. But this third bullet point is where things get interesting. We're not assuming closure under complements, but we are assuming some kind of good behavior. That if you take any two any two sets in S in the semi-algebra, with uh, say A contained in B, then when you delete from B, A, then you get not necessarily something in S, but a union of finitely many disjoint things in S. So that's that's the key difference. So uh, the first two bullet points are just as you would expect for an algebra of sets, and then the third bullet point is where the word semi comes in, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, a semi-algebra of sets is a weaker has weaker conditions on it because this third condition is weakened from, from just saying that the complement is, is in there. Instead, we say the complement is a union of finitely many disjoint things that are in there. Now, again, the idea is that this whole thing is rigged, this definition is rigged so that uh, when you just throw in finite unions, uh, take S and then just throw in all the finite unions of things in S, that you will actually get an algebra of sets. But that's something to prove. So uh, I think today's lecture kind of ran, already ran a little bit over time. So I'll, I'll prove that next time, that if you take a semi-algebra of sets, close it under unions by finite unions by throwing in the finite unions, then you get an algebra of sets. Um, and then we will uh, use that fact to discuss extending additive or countably additive functions from semi-algebras of sets to the algebras of sets that they generate.